Hey there, everybody. So today I'm going to talk to you about having, I think what I have is potato blight. Oh, this is so sad. Ooh, yikes. Oh, this is so sad. So a couple weeks ago, a friend of mine texted me a picture and she said, you know, Linda, I think, I think I might have potato blight. You know, what do you do when you get this? And I didn't know what to tell her because in my years of, my three years of growing potatoes, I've never had any potato disease at all. Um, they've always grown just fine. I've never had any rot anywhere on any of my potatoes. So I didn't really know what to tell her. So she's like, okay, well, I'll, I'll research and get back to you. I said, great. So sure enough, a few weeks, well, maybe about a week later, I started to notice we had a really big um, dry spell and then a rainy, humid spell here. And sure enough, I noticed some of my potatoes starting to have this like black spotted on some of the leaves. Some of the leaves were yellowing and I knew it was too early for the plant to die and be, you know, like ready for harvest because we're just flowering. So I was like, uh oh, and I, I was already kind of alerted to perhaps we might have a blight because of, you know, my friend that alerted me to it. So I contacted her and I said, what did you use? And so she said, oh, all you have to do is clip the bottom leaves um, that might touch the dirt. And then she sprayed with this stuff, copper fungicide on all of her potato plants. And she said, you know, looks pretty good. Looks like we're good to go. I said, all right, that sounds good. So that's what I did. I clipped off and I'll show you um, any leaf that looked kind of yucky. Uh, looked brown, looked spotted, looked wilted or curled. And then I sprayed with the copper fungicide um, on a, I think it was a Saturday and let them, you know, that's what I did. And then this said, I think this says to apply every seven to 10 days. I can read it, but I'll put a, I'll put a link to this in the description too, so you can uh, find it yourself. Um, Begin treatment, this is what it says, though, begin treatment two weeks before disease normally appears. Well, I didn't know that because I've never had disease. Um, and re repeat at seven to 10 day intervals for as long as needed and reapply after rain. Okay, well, I wasn't being very vigilant. So I did um, spray them on, I think it was a Saturday, and then the next week I did spray them on a Friday, and then yesterday I sprayed them on a Saturday. So I've been definitely getting them sprayed, my, all 200 of my potato plants um, every week. However, I, have, I didn't really realize how invasive a potential blight could be until last night. Last night, my friend puts a picture on our, our local garden group and shows that she tried to just pull some early potatoes and it didn't look so good. Um, it looked like it might have some blight on it. It definitely was kind of black. It did not look like a healthy potato at all. And so she was, you know, asking questions about that. So that prompted me then to start searching. And I actually searched for some YouTube channels on here that discuss potato blight. I found a couple, and actually I'll, I'll link them in the description. The ones that I felt like, wow, they really knew what they were talking about with blight. And I really wish I had watched these when I first noticed the problem like three weeks ago. So most of them, what they suggest you do is as soon as you see um, the blight, you should just cut the plant down, right down immediately, put the plant material in a plastic garbage bag or burn it. You do not want to put it in your compost or the spores from the fungus will uh, spread, keep spreading and they can spread onto on tomatoes too. So that's something that I have to be careful with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray my tomato plants with this stuff because it does say you can, you can use this as a preventative. So I am going to do that. So that's definitely on my list to try to save my garden. Um, so what else? Yeah, they say you can cut them. You can leave the potatoes in ground for up to two weeks, two to three weeks, if you need to store them there, or you can dig them up right away. So I have to like make a decision of what I want to do. So the different things that I, that I watched and read, some said that between, if you have 10% of your plant covered in this like blight, your potatoes are gone. And a few others had said 25% of your plant, you're gone. So I really need to take a strong look at my plants and decide what it is I'm going to do. I think I'm going to err on the side of caution. And if a plant has any sort of disease, I think I'm just going to cut it 
and pull it up to save any of the plants that don't have any uh, sign of disease yet. There's one other thing I did, and I wish I did this more, more diligently, was I was also reading how the spores can they, they're on the leaves and the whole thing is you want to prevent, prevent them from going into the soil and down the stem and into the soil and into the actual potato, you know, vegetable itself, the whole the seed. And so what I did is I made, I took a gallon of water. So I just filled up a jug, the gallon of water. And I was reading some research articles on what can just naturally kill, you know, fungus. And I read a whole bunch of different research papers. I'll, if I, if I can find them all again, I will link them all in the description. Um, and there were varying um, studies that show a whole bunch of different types of essential oils that can, um, I guess, have antifungal properties and that can help prevent blight in the, if you water the dirt with it. So I tried that on some, some of my rows, not all the rows. So I took a gallon of water and I put in, and I have the percentages in the, up, in, in upstairs. I'll put that in the description of oregano, thyme, fennel, lavender, and rosemary. So I just made this water mixture and I watered um, at the ground level, not on the leaves. I watered at the ground level a couple of rows of that just to let that kind of seep into the dirt to see if that would maybe help kill any fungus that was in the dirt. Now, I only did that once. Now, in retrospect, after reading now how invasive the blight is, I probably should have done that a couple of times a week, but I don't really know. So what I'm going to do is I will do that for my surviving plants just to see if that helps. All right, so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the camera and I'll walk over to the potato plants and show you what I believe is love a light. And remember, I did cut off a lot of the leaves, but there, there are still some that I, because I didn't realize I was supposed to cut them all off. Um, and we're gonna make some decisions on if I should just completely uh, kill the plants and dig up those potatoes, or if I should um, just trim them and hope that the fungus has not made it down to the actual potato to rot it. All right, so let's go take a look, a closer look at the actual plants. Okay, so this is the first potato plant that I noticed having any sort of blight looking thing. And so what I had done is I had cut off all the stems and leaves and you can, I don't know if you can see all the spots that looked like there was blight. And I was like, yep, I'll just cut those all off. I'll spray the rest, we're good to go. However, there are definitely more spots on it now. And I should have every day come out here and trim them, or at first sight, I should have cut the plant and let it go, but I did not. So here we are with the dilemma what to do. So I'm gonna look at this first row. This first row is definitely still showing signs of blight, so I think this plant has to go, this plant has to go. Oh boy, uh, looks like most of these are gonna have to go. Okay, so after you took a little walk through my potato plants and you saw what I had there, I think you can see that some of my plants definitely have 25% of their leaves um, affected by the blight. And I definitely think I have some that have 10% that have affected by it. So this is gonna be a tough decision, but I'm gonna have to start deciding who gets cut and who gets pulled. I can tell immediately the ones in that, that second row in. I'm definitely gonna do like right now. And then um, some of the other ones, I just have to make a careful decision. So one thing I did listen to in another YouTube video was that you wanna make sure that you don't touch a sick plant or plant with a blight to, and, then, and then touch a healthy plant. You wanna make sure you either wash your hands in between and you wanna make sure if you're, if you're trimming that you disinfect your scissors as well in between. But I'm not planning on cutting any healthy plants, so I'm not too worried about that right now. Right now, I have a garbage bag <laughs> to put my plant matter in and I have some scissors and I'm gonna cut the first few plants right now. I'll do that with you guys and I'll dig up, if it's not too hard on my shoulder, um, if not, I have to wait for my 
husband or my son to help me because of my injury in my shoulder. All right, let's go see what the damage is. Okay, so I'm gonna cut them just down to the stem. This is so sad. Okay, because I wanna make sure I remove all the plant matter. And that's gonna go in a garbage bag. Cut this one and this one, because these are the ones that I know 100% have been affected. Okay, I'm gonna get a garbage bag, put those leaves in, and then we'll dig this up and we'll see if we have any potatoes in here that can be saved. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to dig up. Now, I just took two instruments that I'm gonna use um, because I'm gonna have to disinfect them when I'm done, but hopefully these will work. Usually I need like a shovel but oopsies, all these leaves have to, I have to make sure I get. So we'll just see if I get any potato. Ooh, yikes. Oh, I forgot this is a broken one. Ah, I'm gonna have to get another, another trowel. Yeah, I have to get another trowel. Okay. So from that first plant, I have one little perfect potato. <laughs> he has not been affected. That's good. That's good. That's good. I'll just put them right here. Okay, so this is a good example. So, oh, God, I have one potato, one little potato not affected, and then another completely slimy, gooey, rotted potato so itty bitty healthy potato oh this is so sad this is so sad those are just the seed potatoes and actually these guys these little guys are looking okay i mean they're too little to really like cook with but Okay, so I found not many very healthy, happy looking potatoes. Very small potatoes. They're not ready yet, um, but they look healthy. So I'm gonna try digging up a couple other types of potato that look like, like I said, that the blight looked like it had had them. And I think what I'm going to do, if they keep continuing to come up looking good, and I'll show you the next set that, that comes up, I think what I'll do is continue to spray with the copper fungicide, and I think I'll continue to spray to water, um, water them with that essential oil blend and see if that really does help. Okay, I'm gonna go try some other ones. Okay, so I just dug up another variety that was the next row over, and perfect, beautiful potato. No sign of blight. The leaves all curled up, look bad. Uh, I know it was a bad plant, I know. It was one of those ones that looked really bad, but so far, a beautiful, perfect potato. So it looks like I'm digging them up early enough to save them. Okay, so, so far in the few plants I've dug up, I have healthy potatoes. They look okay. So I think what I'm doing is okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue going through the plants. Any one that looks like it is, I'm gonna do 25% or more uh, affected by the blight, I'm gonna pull. Any one that isn't, I'm going to, well I already sprayed yesterday, I'm gonna use that essential oil um, watering, water, to water at the base, it's not gonna hurt. And I am going to continue to spray them and check them weekly. Now every day I will go out and cut the leaves that look blighty and see if that helps. And every once in a while, I'll dig up another plant. Um, if I see rot, that's it, I'll pull them all up. But right now, I'm only, I'm, I'm not seeing any rot in the potatoes yet. So fingers crossed that I was able to kick the blight before it took over my crop. 
All right, so thanks for watching this video and thank you for being a part of this journey with me as I am growing my potatoes. I have a couple of videos about how it is that I um, planted and how I hill the potatoes and I'll post those in the description and I'll put them somewhere around here for you to see. Um, and I will give you an update I will give you an update uh, as I continue to pull potatoes and see which ones have blight, which ones don't, who's been affected, who's been rotted, and who hasn't, just to see if what I'm doing with the copper fungicide, the essential oil watering, and the clipping helps. All right, so thanks for watching. Hey, remember, please like, share, and subscribe.